So you just bought your welder, now you're looking for a welding cart for your shop. Maybe you're going to roll it around outside a little bit too. Your wallet's feeling a little thin after buying that welder, and that shielding gas tank certainly didn't help anything. So you really don't want to spend a whole lot more on a cart. You're seeing options out there anywhere from $40 to $600. You don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to show you the cheap option that I think will actually work the best for you. So here I've got the cheap cart. This thing has been recreated, you know, several dozen times. This particular one here is actually from Menards. It's like Home Depot and Lowe's if you've never heard of it. They were 40 bucks. Uh, recently they've increased to 45 bucks. You get the rebate with it and sales tax, I think it comes out to like $48. So this thing, it's a little different than the ones you'll find online. It doesn't have the pull bar or the handle up front which really sucks because how are you supposed to move it? The welder doesn't bolt down to the top, so you can't use it to grab onto. You actually have to grab onto this lip. And that brings me to the biggest problem with this thing. It does not roll. The casters on the front of this don't pivot. They don't rotate. And so they don't want to, it doesn't want to move at all like this thing is 100 percent worthless waste of a 50 dollar bill so other features i want to point out on it it does have a nice spot for the the welding the shielding gas tank it's got two chains that would hold it on the problem is the welder slides back so far it runs into the tank and there's nothing to space the tank away from the welder with. There's plenty of room on the bottom to move the tank, but you'd actually have to build some spacer blocks to keep this from touching. Another major problem is the length of our top rack compared to the majority of the welders like this that are out on the market. It's about four inches short of where it needs to be for these isolator supports to actually rest on here. Because if you look under the welder, You've got isolators on the front, the back, and it's just sheet metal in between. You want the machine resting on the four corners, not on the bottom. But with this cart, it's going to be resting on the sheet metal. So the length of these carts, not very well thought out at all. This is really made for like your whatever, your $100 Harbor Freight welder that's really tiny. The other thing I really don't like is how high up this sits. If I was going to keep this cart, which I considered at one point, I was actually going to remove this top shelf, cut these supports off, move this down to here, weld this to it so we could have the proper length for the welder to sit on, and that would lower our center of gravity. I was going to move the rear axle shaft. I was actually going to get a 5 8 axle shaft, move it all the way to the back so that the, uh, the full weight of the welders and the sh the tank are between the wheels not behind it because this is partially behind i was going to put 10 inch pneumatic tires on the back and then i was going to put some bigger um, ca pneumatic casters on the front the problem with that is i was going to have about 112 dollars in parts just for the wheels not counting all the sheet metal and the spacers and everything so at that point uh, 112 dollars in parts and $48, you're looking at 160 bucks just to modify this cart. And even then, it's still sketchy at best. So I decided, instead of messing with this, let's start out with something that's going to work how we want it to from the get-go. So this is the Gorilla Cart. I did a lot of shopping around. They offer these also at Menards, Harbor Freight, Amazon. I got this one cheapest off Amazon right now. It's $85. They used to be $50 before all these crazy price hikes started happening. Right now you get it for $85 on Amazon. It comes just as you see it. It actually doesn't come with the side racks if you buy it from some of the other vendors and they'll charge up to $100 without the side racks. They fold down and fall off as you can see. This cart, I'm not even sure I'm going to keep the side racks. The main thing I was after 
was it comes with $60 worth of tires on it. If you go to buy four of these 10 inch pneumatic tires, that's gonna cost you 60 bucks. Now, these don't hold air very well, so I'm planning on putting some tire slime in them. I have the same size tire on two different other carts. None of them held air when I got them. Put slime in them, they hold air just fine now. But the fact you can buy this cart basically for the cost of the tires, and you've got a nice steering setup, you've got a nice handle, it's low, so your center of gravity is gonna be low. Your footprint is pretty similar to this cheap cart. It's just a little bit wider, but we want the width because I'm gonna be pulling this for myself personally. I've got two buildings. With this cart, I was terrified of the idea of this thing falling over with the weight being so high up and the track width being so narrow. This thing's low, it's got a wider track width, so I think this is going to work great. I'm going to get to work on modifying this to hold everything, and then I'll show you the end result. So here is our finished product. I went ahead, I started out by adding a 14 gauge sheet to the bottom, which solidified that paper thin kind of expanded metal they had on here. I couldn't stand on the middle of this cart without my foot trying to sink through. Um, there just wasn't any rigidity whatsoever to the expanded metal bed. Once I put the 14 gauge sheet on, I actually found out the bed was solid enough at that point that I could stand the tank up vertically if I wanted to. But after playing with things to see how I wanted to configure the cart, um, after playing with laying the tank down horizontally like it is, it just makes the cart pull so smooth and easily. So I really just kind of fell in love with that idea. If you wanted to mount your tank vertically, you definitely could though. So the biggest thing that comes from laying it down horizontally is you have to protect the valve and you have to secure the tank. So I had to extend the frame. I used some angle iron and I'll put the specs in the description for all the materials I used. I simply cut open the top part of the angle frame, got some more angle iron, it's just one inch angle iron, and ran that up. Just did some corner welds there. I used one inch square tubing, made sure the tank could bottom up, or bottom out against this, butt up against it so it can't come this way added some inch and a half tubing that I had laying around for the um, hook to hold the ground cable, the gun. And you can see you can just set it in through the top there, clamp it through the top. I also used a flat strap on this side because I didn't want to change the width of the cart. Use square tubing on this side. You can see how tight it is between the tank and the welder. They cannot touch, but it is probably within an eighth inch um, between the tank and the welder. So that's why I didn't have any more room and I did have to weld this on the outside of the frame. For the other side, again, I just used some one inch tubing. Overall, um, I had the 14 gauge sheet and I had this tubing. Uh, the angle iron and the one inch tubing cost me 30 bucks. I got these little plastic one inch tube end caps off Amazon. They really make it look like a finished product and to uh, secure the tank horizontally, probably the most important part of the entire build, I plasma cut this piece out that holds the tank from moving forward. Then this little brace here keeps that tab from ever bending. It doesn't do anything to keep the tank from moving that way. That's what those tubes on that end are for. But to keep it from moving this way, this special plasma cut piece, you can see it's cut deeper so that my threads won't butt up against it. You don't want to damage those threads. So there's a gap between the threads and this plate. There's plenty of room for this relief valve. And then I have to keep the whole thing from rotating side to side. I don't want my gauges coming out here or my 
hose rotating that way. So I simply used some one inch um, tubing drop and welded that on because every tank has this kind of flat face uh, fitting screwed on and I left a little bit of a gap on there to account for variations in this kind of um, valve coming out but even my t-size tanks have the same dimensions on the valves that are in them so that keeps our tank from moving forward or back and from rotating also protects it from getting hit on the front of the cart there was nothing to hold our handle which i really didn't like because i didn't want the handle bumping into the uh, ammo can so i went to the hardware store and they have what they call broom holders this is designed for a pegboard actually but i just used some inch and a half tubing to space this up welded that on and now that holds the handle in place i took a piece of um, formed steel welded that on one corner welded a flat here just on the end and that keeps the ammo can in perfect position so ammo cans are supposed to be watertight so that can hold my consumables extra wire my 110 volt adapter all that stuff i made sure the uh, lid would open up and nicely rest against our gauge protector it holds itself open if I would have had it any further over, gravity would have kept pulling the lid shut. And then I think lastly, it's going to be the welder itself. So I had this canvas cover. This is actually the part number that they say is for the 211. It's not. Um, I actually got this for a square wave. It doesn't fit the 211 very nicely. It's got a cutout for the hoses in the back but there's no cutout on the front. So it doesn't fit perfectly, but it does have this nice side pouch so you can store your power cable in there. I'm actually planning on taking this gas hose off and this is like a five or six footer that comes with the unit. But I've got a 10 foot so that I can actually um, pull my welder off the cart, set it up on top of the army truck or if I want to work on something higher up, all you have to do is have a longer gas hose. So to keep the welder in position, I simply welded some flat tabs. This is just inch and a half flat. Welded that on uh, the front and back here. And then if you can see down in there, I did it on both sides of those corners on the right hand side of the machine. I angled them so it actually funnels. When you set the welder down, it funnels it down. So this thing is super solid, can't move forward, back, or side to side. The only other thing that you could potentially do is put some hooks on your side so you could strap the welder down and you could strap the tank down. But you'd have to be going like 20 miles an hour over outside rough terrain to really need that. So I decided to leave that part out. Last thing I'll mention is the paint, which I'm looking at it in the camera and I'm looking at it in real life. In real life, it looks like a spot-on match. In the camera, the paint looks kind of orange to me. Um, it's actually Rust-Oleum Sunshine Red. So I got five different colors of paint, and uh, nothing was even close until Sunshine. Tried Regal Red, Cherry Red, and then I also tried their Apple and their Poppy Seed. And nothing was even close until I got the Sunshine Red. I got it at Lowe's. Lowe's and Home Depot carry it. Menards doesn't carry it. Um, you can special order at Menards or you can order it off Amazon as well. So again, super happy with how it pulls around. I think the only other thing I'll mention is the way the draw bar is made. To back it up, you really need to fold the handle down so you can push on it straight. Otherwise, it actually tries bending the whole thing down. It pulls forward really easily. It's going to make it so much easier getting this thing around my shop and going outside to my shed. So I hope that inspires you to go out and build your own cart. You just got a welder, so what's better than a little welding cart project as your first welding project? Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.